Gamerilla is a free, learner-friendly, and supportive game-making marathon dedicated to finding ways to better serve people who are often excluded from traditional game-making spaces. Founded in 2013, Gamerilla has helped hundreds of people start making games. This year's global edition will take place July 9th to 11th and is focusing on mentorship, industry connections, and career advice in order to support emerging game makers. Every year we give a workshop series before the jam, and this year we're following it up with some more workshops in July. So, uh, so far we've had what makes a compelling soundtrack, storytelling through music. We've had puzzle design, this workshop, which is character design. And to be announced, we've got uh, a panel from AAA to artists career paths. Um, we've got a workshop, creating your concept art portfolio, and we've got another one, entering the game industry, to be announced. So before we begin, I would like to start by acknowledging that Concordia University is located on, on unceded Indigenous lands. The Ganyange Haga Nation is recognized as the custodians of the lands and waters on which we gather today. Jojage, Montreal, is historically known as a gathering place for many First Nations. Today, it is home to a diverse population of Indigenous and other peoples. We respect the continued connections with the past, present, and future in our ongoing relationships with Indigenous and other peoples within the Montreal community. All right, so um, Ying, you can you can go ahead and introduce yourself. Okay, so hello everyone. My name is uh, Ying Ding. So welcome to character design. I added uh, in three steps um, because I thought like uh, the you know what we're going to do today. It's going to only take three steps. So it's going to be really easy and it's uh, anybody can do it if you never draw in your life you can still um, do this and it'll be really simple so don't worry about the difficulty level so a little bit about myself my name is Ying Ding I'm currently a concept artist at Ubisoft Montreal uh, in Canada um, and the games I've worked on um, were uh, the, mo a lot of the Far Cry franchise, so Far Cry 6 that's coming out in October. Hope you guys go give it a play. There's a lot of cool stuff that's been done there. I've worked on the New Dawn uh, from uh, a year or two years ago. Time flies. And there are some unannounced titles that I'm working on um, that will come out perhaps next year. We will see. <laughs> so in the past, I was a 3D artist when I first started, and I did a lot of modeling. Um, and then I also did uh, illustrations for mobile games. And then now I, I am a concept artist. So um, here's my art station, Instagram, and Twitter. If you, uh, if at the end of this workshop you feel like yeah, I, I can learn some more stuff and you you just want to talk or just connect, you can find me on these websites. I'll send them in the chat towards the end. Okay, so today's um, workshop, we're going to have this uh, structure where the first half of it will be, I will explain to you the process and some theory about character design that's very commonly used um, that I, I personally do for my work and also for my personal work. And the second half, we will have um, a, a demo where you can do it together with me. I'm going to share with you a Photoshop file that you can um, work on. So I hope you guys have Photoshop, but if you don't have Photoshop is totally fine. I have another um, proposal for you that you can do to follow along. So um, today mostly, I think the, the software that I use to design my characters is obviously Photoshop to just to draw, but this one is really like replaceable with anything else. You can draw on your iPad, you can draw on paper, you can draw in another software, like uh, there's Clip Studio Paint that's super popular right now. And it seems like people, some people like it even better than Photoshop. It's a lot cheaper too. Um, so, I mean, you can't even design a character in Microsoft Paint if you're like, if you feel like it. And there are other softwares that I like to use to help me design characters is uh, Blender and ZBrush. So I don't know if you guys know Blender, maybe you dabbled a bit into 3D um, or not. And 
but I think Blender is a very useful tool to do lighting for your character or to try things in different angle. So, so you might ask yourself, like, you know, I never draw before or I never like, uh, I don't draw very well. I'm weak at anatomy or something or proportions. And I really want to draw a very dynamic character for my story. Then what do I do? Do I just like um, sit there and suffer? Well, that's not true. There's many tools I can show you later to help you with that. If you feel like you struggle with anatomy, but you still want to design like a cool character with the, you know, approximately correct proportions. So anyway, or you could use pen and paper. That's that works too. Um, it's very easy. You just get an eraser and a pencil and then get started. Um, I use a ZBrush a bit to sculpt some like weird monster-ish characters. You can start with like a good base and then you can do some uh, deformation or adding some kind of a um, like a sh super shoulder pad or two heads, four, five arms, anything you want. And then um, it, it helps with like things that are like not so human, let's say kind of character. Okay, so um, let's get into it. So how to design any character. Um, before you even start designing or sketching, you should make sure to answer these really obvious questions. So you want to ask yourself, who is your character? And what do I mean by who is like, how old is your character? Um, what gender is your character? Maybe your character has no gender. It, it could like go a lot of ways. Um, is there a race to your character? Is it like a space lizard race or it's just uh, like um, African um, person or Asian person? Uh, how tall is your character? Is it like attack on Titan 100 meter, you know, like the giant or is, is it just like a normal one? Um, and then um, how, like, what's the weight of your character? Are they really buff? Are they really, really skinny? Or are they like a ghost who has no weight at all? So you have to really like set, answer these set of questions first. So I put an example here where um, you guys might recognize the guy on the left side is uh, McCree from Overwatch. It's okay if you don't recognize him. The important thing is, you know, I put this character there because when you look at him, he can answer these questions. How old is this character? What's their gender, race, height, weight? It's all there. Like he's like a, you know, Caucasian uh, person and it's a guy and, and then they're probably like, I'm guessing 35, but I might be wrong. Maybe he's like 25, just looks really like older. I don't know. Um, and he looks like he's like one, 180 centimeter or 185, I think. So your concept should clearly show these, um, these questions, like the answer to these questions. And in, the, in my work uh, at the company, then it would be more like a brief. You would be given a brief by your, um, your manager that says, we need this character. This is how old they are. This is their gender. This is... Um, whatever, so design within these um, guidelines. So if we get a little bit deeper into that character um, stories, you wanna also ask yourself about the environment that this character is in. So environment, not like it, it could be really about like the world they live in, but it could also be um, what time is the era is it a futuristic thing, modern thing, fantasy, sci-fi, or a bit of both? So if, if I'm looking at McCree here, I feel like he's got a bit of a, like, a, you know, Western plus sci-fi. Um, so it's not just Western and it has to be sci-fi. And like, it's not just one or the other. It could be a mixture of both if you do it well, right? Oh, just heard something. <laughs> um, and you can also ask yourself if, your character has a job, um, like maybe there's some kind of a mercenary, maybe they are a nurse, maybe they are, um, they got no job, you know, you can do that. I don't know if you guys watch anime, but there's the, a lot of those, the anime, isekai anime where the character has no job and plays video game at home. So, so there's that too. 
and you want to ask yourself um, the motivation of your character. So that one might not necessarily show in your design, um, but it can really help you to think about the items you want to put, the expression and the the posing for your character. So you want to think about like, okay, my character is like a, it's an angry, edgy person who wants to revenge, uh, you know, kind of like, um, Sasuke in Naruto or something so maybe they, they're like a bit dark um, maybe they're a really happy character who wants to help out everyone and become a more popular person so um, you want to really really write down if you have to write it down if you um, already know in your head you don't need to note it down you, you can so let's say that you answer all your questions and then the next step really is to do a research. So here, I want to recommend you guys a software um, called PureRef. I don't know if you guys are familiar with it, but every time I ask in some of my um, classes, there's always people who don't know the software. So I'll, I'll like kind of like show you guys a bit what it is. Um, it's free and it's a software that is being used a lot for reference gathering. Like before I had the software, I would put all my references in a, a folder and it's got random names and it's different sizes. It's, it's a mess. And, or I, and when I need the photos, I would try to put them in Photoshop and it makes hundreds of layers and then it crashes my Photoshop because my computer is not very strong. So with this software, what you could do is I'm going to get out of the, of that. PowerPoint and try to show you guys. So, oh, it's a bit small. No, it's too big. Hold on. So this is the software. Basically, when you open it, it just makes like like a window that you can resize or put it anywhere you want on your screen. And then you can go on the internet, like on Google or something. You see like some photos that you like, and then you just control C, control V, put it here, then you can kind of group them together or make it bigger, make it smaller. Um, like you can flip it left or right, you can rotate it, you can turn it into grayscale. It's really handy instead of making 100 layers in Photoshop or like a big folder with all these pictures. So this is just one file and it contains all your reference. Uh, most importantly, I think it's good because you can group your ideas. You know, I think it's really rare that you guys will only have one idea for your character. So when you have multiple ideas, you can really group it together. So this one is like, I, I got this like um, a bit like uh, inspired by Mongolian uh, clothing. And then I got this one that's a bit, um, a bit random, I guess. I got some night stuff. I got some um, medieval lady here so um yeah please look into the software it's free okay um so you want to do research a uh, visual research on your character of like possible looks that you um you're interested in you want to research the clothing the accessories um weapons if they've got one but it's really really easy to get lost in your reference searches i don't know if it happens to you but when I'm on Pinterest, um, I can click on one picture and then it shows another really great reference and I keep clicking and then I just gather reference and I never start my painting. I just keep gathering reference and then, you know, you just end up with a lot of pictures but no work done. So you want to try to hold back a bit, like not to, to get lost too much. I'd say you should spend a day just gathering references. Um, when you're designing your character. I know it's like uh, maybe you guys are participating in a game jam and it's usually just like not a lot of time. You have to make a game in three days, but um, if you have time before, you can spend a day doing, uh, doing this research. So websites that I use to find references is Pinterest, ArtStation, um, Google, and sometimes Behance, they've got some nice um, graphic design or just anything, um, anything, yeah. So let's go next. So what kind of references do you need? I recommend you to find three types of reference. So you want to get real life photos of 
um, like it could be a historical thing and you want real photos of clothing from a museum and you want to really pay attention to the description of these things like is this from a um, certain time era is it is it like uh, is it good the, the time you want and is this um, you know this could be just like a poorly done cosplay of some you know like I don't know Gandalf or something but so you want to see if your reference is legit um, but you want to have real life photos and the se second type of reference would be uh, artwork that you like or characters that you that's from your favorite artists that you really like or it inspires you I think it's important for you to know what are the designs out there um, so that you don't like, let's say, end up doing another two headed ice person with, you know, a magic rock. So it's better for you to do research on, okay, what's the most popular character in the ice mage section? And if it's that, well, maybe I can try to make a little more different kind of designs. And it's also very good for um, choosing colors as well when you look at other people's art and to benchmark yourself. So I recommend having some of that. And finally, um, the type of reference in the end is random stuff that inspire you. Uh, it sounds uh, it sounds really random, but it's it could be anything. It could be like if you're trying to draw like a mage um, with ice, then you see this photo of like uh, this, this ice covered in snow in, in Antarctica or something, and you see the color of the ice, um, it, it could be a good reference for your, for your photos, um, for your like ice person's head. So it could be like a texture, texture inspiration. It could be anything. So anything that helps you. Okay, so let's say you gathered your reference and you're ready to start, but Again, before you start, you want to think about like what's a good versus not so good character design. Um, in my opinion, there's no good or bad character design because what you find is good looking, someone might not find it to be good. And some people who um, find something not great and you might like it. So an obvious example is, um, I think on the internet, there's a lot of the designs of like, uh, Asian inspired character or like uh, like like Japanese uh, samurai stuff or like you know like ne ne Neo Tokyo samurai cyberpunk stuff that's being done and it's quite popular but some of those designs uses um, like uh, stuff that I, I find like oh let's say it's a little bit overdone um, but it's so it's popular because for whatever reason then you know like I might not find it good but um, these uh, hundreds of thousands of people, they like it. So you you want to really think about like um, who is looking at it? Who do you, who do you want to like, who's your audience basically? Um, but I will give you my personal opinion on what can help you improve um, your design. So the first thing is originality. Uh, but what is originality? I think you guys know what it is so um in short it's just to be unique right and i put some of these um well-known character here except maybe except the except the last one is like an artwork from a really uh, awesome artist called nivan chantara but you've got uh you've got this uh you know classical mage here and when this first came out, the first person to think I'm going to design an old wise mage with a staff and this is going to be the newest hit, they were probably original. So to be original, it means to be the first one to do something. Um, and with our, you know, 21st century of uh, explosive information uh, era, it's quite hard to be the first one to do something that has never been done before a lot of those things has been done you know you got um like another wise old uh, jedi person right so the first one who did that it's 
probably very original, but you know, the 100 time uh, or 1000 time you do this, it's less original. So I think this one is really hard, but try to do something that nobody has done before. It's very, it's not easy, but I think there are still possibilities and potentials out there for you to do something like that. Okay, so the second thing about good versus not so good design is functionality. And there are two sides to this functionality keyword, I'm putting it here. So the first one is functionality in terms of like a logic. Um, I put here a transformer, um, this, uh, this transformer robot design. I, I saw he is called Ironhide. I never really watched too much Transformers. So if you are a big fan of Transformer, you, you maybe recognize this robot. So in my personal opinion, I know that Transformer like really strong uh, mechas that can fight and then can turn into cars and drive itself. But when I saw the Transformer movies, I think uh, I think these are from the movies, like on the left side at least. So just look at this design. There is a lot of thing going on and there are a lot of pieces. And if I am a grandma and I saw my kid watching this and they tell me this is a robot that can fight and they go to like really intense fight. I would find that this robot, once they punch something or kick something, all these parts gonna fall out. Look at how small these uh, parts are. Like they, they don't seem solid to me. So if somebody who is not uh, well-versed in, in, in this topic is looking at it, given the context and they feel like this doesn't really work then you know there's some kind of like logical um, disconnection here so I would feel that they should go for a more um, bigger silhouette instead of like these very tiny shapes like bigger shapes so this doesn't feel too solid to me um, so this one would be maybe like a better example it's um, artwork by William Bao and to be honest, I don't know what it is. Maybe he doesn't know what it is. Like he might have whipped this out in an afternoon, like he's bored and he just drew something. Um, but when I look at this, I have a certain idea of like what this person does logically. So it looks like some kind of a fighter, soldier, a futuristic person. And they've got, you know, super uh, crotch pad to protect his, his uh, you know, lower body. He's got knee pads. He's got shoulder pads and some communication device and a helmet. So maybe the environment is um, hazardous. So everything here has kind of like a function, you know, you protect yourself from falling down, you protect someone kick you in the, you know, in the lower body. Um, but here I just see a lot of like ZBrush kit bash together and I'm like, I'm not sure what's going on. So you want your character to make sense in that aspect. The second aspect of functionality is, I think it would be the technical limitations. So what are you designing your character for? So you could be designing for video game. And if you're designing for games, there are limitations to how many polygon your character can have. So if you have a character who has uh, 10 arms and five heads and a super giant cape made of bullets, then it would, exceed the poly count um, limitation by too much. So you your character literally cannot exist in that game or else it will explode everyone's computer uh, who is playing. So you want to know what is the technical constraint of your game. If you're designing for a 2D side scroller for your game jam, which I see people do that a lot and they're using um, sprites or something. So you, you have to animate it in 2D. Then if your character has a crazy hair with like 5,000 braids and you have to animate that in 2D or in 3D, then maybe you're not going to finish your game for the game jam on time. And it's better to have a finished game than an incomplete game, even if it looks like less good, um, I would say. 
So you might be designing for movies, which is what happened with Transformer on the left side. Look at how many stuff this one got. In movies, there is much less constraint. They can practically do whatever they want. They don't need to try to fit this in a, in a game. So here's your result. <laughs> um, and maybe you're designing for a book. Um, book cover or something or for books fictional character you can you can basically do whatever you want there's no technical constraint as long as it looks good on book cover and fits the story same thing for personals like uh, you might be designing for your um, dnd game or it's your original character your oc uh, for your role play stuff so um you you do whatever you want i think in that um in that aspect and um, I put a picture of this like super soldier person in the forest is to um, add a, the final point is if you're designing for a game or for a movie, your character, please do not forget the environment that your character is in. If your game is set in a jungle and you want your character to stand out, well, maybe you shouldn't put him or her green. Um, Maybe you want to put some other color other than green, but if you want them to be really stealth on the on, on, in the game, then you know you go with green. But normally, I think you would want your character to stand out against the background instead of like blending in like that. Okay, and um, this is not oh, somebody. Somebody's dog is barking. <laughs> um, okay, so. Uh, I think this is finally, but um, I get this a lot, like sometimes like my, um, my manager could ask me like, can you make it more iconic? And I feel like iconic is a word that is like a myth, like a legend, like, like very complex that at the same time, very simple. Nobody really knows. What do you mean by iconic? What do you mean? Like you want it more iconic? Is it like, like in graphic design, people would say like, make it pop or something. So um, I would think that, okay, here are three characters that are quite iconic, right? Um, we got Mickey Mouse, Mario and Darth Vader that most of you guys know at least one, I think, or all three. And they're iconic, but why are they iconic? So you might think like, oh, because Mickey Mouse, he's got like these two ears and then the shape of his face. You know, you see that a lot in Disneyland, that logo. And when you think about Mario, you see the hat. You think about the hat with the M on it. You think about the mustache, uh, Italian, and then the, the you know, the, the how do you call this? Bo not bodysuit, but like the one piece thing. Overalls overalls thank you <laughs> the overall um and you might think like wow they're they're iconic because they they have such simple sleek design and very to the point and darth vader oh my god he's got the lightsaber he's got his helmet and that breathy like really cool voice um but i i, I want to tell you guys here's what i think none of these characters are iconic at all so why like if i were to take these three characters and send them to a planet on i don't know like mars i'm gonna show it to martians and martians they also have their own entertainment industry and i show them these characters without any context or anything they might be like oh cool it's a mouse it's a um a guy with a red hat you know how do i know it's a plumber i don't really know like it's it's a guy with a red hat and this this guy's got is in full black. I can't really see well. So they might think these are terrible designs or just forgettable or normal design. Oh, it's a char cartoon character, whatever. Um, what makes a character iconic is not really its design. Well, partially it's its design that is not overly lame or overly like complex. But most of it is what you do with the design. Like Mickey Mouse is famous because it's played in so many places. They have so many movies. They have a whole Disneyland for it. They did so much marketing for it. They sold many merchandise and people have been watching it since like their childhood. There is no way this thing doesn't like gets engra like engraved in your brain. And you might ask like when it first started, like how did it get popular then? It's because it's iconic. Well, 
maybe because the animation was really good. The story was funny. It was touching or funny or the voice acting helped it to bring it to life. So it's really what you do with the character that makes it iconic. It's, I think it's much less the design because I'm going to show you guys something that I hope it doesn't make you feel uncomfortable. Um, but it's it's not something I would censor. I think this is still fine. It's a it's a toy. So um, you guys that text a lot on your phone or look at stuff on the internet, you might recognize this thing, right? So it's the poop emoji. Um, very iconic, right? Everybody knows the poop emoji or most of you. So if you can make a piece of turd iconic, then you can really make anything iconic. <laughs> I think. So please, uh, please don't think too much when um, they're asking you for make it iconic or something like that. Okay. Um, now I want to talk about this final aspect of your design is a clear communication. So it overlaps a bit with what we talked about earlier, but um, these are artwork I found on the internet from uh, Luca Shu and Marek Mad Madej. Um, I try to say their name. And what I mean by clear communication is, you know, you have intention to design, let's say, a witch um, who has who is half elf, like like this picture here. So if you show your design to your grandma and she cannot tell that it's a witch, um, it could be like, a little bit less straightforward, but you know, your grandma might be a bit of a stretch. Maybe she's not on the internet a lot and she's she doesn't know what an elf is, then that that's a tough luck, right? Like maybe she knows what an elf is, maybe she doesn't. Um, so you want people to recognize your character with no context, or at least recognize uh, most of what this character does or who they are without any context. You don't want to tell them the context until like, you get their opinion, then you can ask them like, okay, so this was my intention. Um, do you see it at all? And for this guy in the middle, you would see like, uh, it's like some cyberpunk final boss or something. Uh, maybe not a final boss, but he, he doesn't seem like he's nice, you know? He seems like he's going to kick my butt, but um, maybe he's a bad guy in the game who turns good later on, but you want to be able to tell like, is it, are they on a good side? Are they neutral? Are they bad or something? Um, so yeah, clear communication, very important. Okay, so um, without further ado, <laughs> let's get into uh, Photoshop and do a little practice. So today I, you know, I, I guess there's a build up to it. I wanted to draw a nice mage ice mage um, who is female um, and I'm going to explain the first step to you before we even go in actually I need to send you a link everybody so while I explain to you please go to this link and download um, chat where's the chat sorry I'm trying to get the chat out wow Oh, there is a chat. So everyone, this is a Google Drive link and uh, inside is a Photoshop PSD. And if you, um, if you open it, let me just open my own Photoshop really quickly. It shouldn't be very big anyway. So um, if your internet is slow, you should be done downloading in no time. So inside of Photoshop, there are three base characters in there that we will be using today to draw. So um, the first step that we're going to do is to try to do a silhouette for our ice mage. And before we go into that, here are a few things I wanted to mention. Oh, well, you don't have to do an ice mage, but if you want, you can follow along. Like if you want to use this opportunity to design your character for your game or whatever, uh, you can go that way. I, I'm just uh, going to design something along the line of this, um, this really abstract theme. 
So silhouette, usually in character design, I like to start with silhouette explorations. I don't like to go ahead and just draw a sketch or anything like that. So here are silhouettes from Overwatch. Um, and um, as you can see, my favorite dude is right here, McCree. Um, so when you look at the silhouette, here are a few things you want to keep in mind is to have readable silhouette. You want to be able to kind of tell who this character is, what do they do, how old are they, how high, sorry, not how high are they, I mean how tall they are. Sorry for my uh, English. Um, so this is a good example because they have many characters that does different uh, roles in the game. And like you can see like uh, this one's a robot, this one is He's missing a leg, but he, he's like, um, um, you know, he, he looks like he's on his way to do something. And then this one's floating. This one's got like a hammer and this one's a archer person. So you want to have a nice silhouette to begin with. Um, another important thing about silhouette is, is this, uh, this rule like uh, big, medium, small. So that applies later on, but also right now. So what I meant by big, medium, small is, you know, your silhouette can't be made of 100% medium shapes, which is what happened with, or small shape, which is what happened with the transformer earlier. And the rule is like, hopefully you can get 70% of it to be a bigger shape and then 30% of it to be medium or small shapes or 60% of it to be a larger shape and then 30% medium and 10% small. This is not a rule or anything. It's just to help you to, you know, make sure you're not doing Transformer the movie, um, hopefully. So if you have only huge shape, it, it, it will look like a block of thing. If you have only tiny shapes, it's going to look transformer. If you have only medium shape, it's, it's not going to be that great. So you want to watch out for how many big, medium, small shapes you have in your silhouette, even in this stage. OK. There are some shape languages that applies to characters. You will see that they also apply to environment, but that is um, um, a talk for another time. Um, there are weights in shapes, so not just the size. Well, the size is connected to the weight. You can have a character who is top heavy, bottom heavy, um, just, you know, medium, or a guy who is just heavy all around, a very skinny character, or a character who is like uh, two, like two, um, two parts where this part is heavy, so an hourglass. Um, and this doesn't just apply to stylized characters like these that are more cartoony. They also apply to, let's say, something that's more, um, more uh, not realistic. This is still stylized, but, you know, a slightly more realistic character. So you can see here that you've got um, this guy who is basically this guy, right? So he's, he's like a ball. He's, he's big. And uh, you've got characters who are you know, let's say it's not totally bottom heavy, but there is a big focus on the shoes and makes her like really grounded um, in terms of that. So you want to think about the weight of your character. And here are some simple shapes that people use. It's a circular shape, oval, triangle, and rectangles. And um, usually there are some psychological like um, connection to it. So triangles could be associated with something slightly more like aggressive because it's a little bit pointy but it's not always um the case you can have a character who is very nice even though he's got or she's got like pointy triangle shapes um, but most of the time you know if you have a more circular design overall you know the character looks a bit nicer almost like a teddy bear like this grandma or this grandpa, I think, skiing grandpa, or the average Joe who is, you know, of no harm to anyone, just living his normal daily life. So um, I'm missing the rectangle here, but uh, the rec rectangle or square can make, a, you know, a buff, tough character, um, if you want. 
to draw a man, you can draw like more straight angular kind of shape. And this is just like examples I always use in some of my classes. It's like Disney, they put their villains with a lot of uh, rectangle, uh, tri sorry, triangles and they're um, good people with a lot of uh, circular shapes. So this is one way to apply it, but not always the case. I have to warn you. So feel free to break the rule if you uh, if you want to. Okay, so when you draw your character and you guys might be like, I'm really bad at posing or anything. Do I even need a pose? Can I just do this like this Mario guy? Can I just T-pose everybody? Yes, you can, but it looks uh, not so great, right? You, uh, or you do like, I forgot what this is called. I know this is T-pose and then this pose, that's really straight. If you guys remember, let me know, but it's like this, do I call it an eye pose? Um, so it's just like a really frontal, really straight, really boring kind of view. I like to do a little bit of a posing for my characters, even in the silhouette stage. So a pose can really help you sell the personality and overall like design of your character. But um, um, I recommend you to do it if you can. But if you struggle with it, it's fine. I have something for you to help you with it. Um, and you want to try to not overdo it, right? Like if you're doing the design of your character instead of an illustration and you put your character in this pose, um, it's great and all. But if you have to have someone model your character, then this is not a great pose because you, you're hiding part of the waist, you're hiding part of the leg, you know, like the here it's it's hidden a bit too so you want a pose that is let's say still shows all the design like let's say this guy here was like shooting like this uh, thingy you can still see overall what's going on so so that's like acceptable pose even in terms of like a modeling standpoint but this one is a cool pose it's just we don't see a lot and um sometimes if you're not sure of the personality of your character or the story, you want to use a pose that's more neutral. So not standing still doing nothing, but maybe like a hand on the waist or just a little bit of a, you know, a, a lean, small lean or something. So just make sure that um, not to do a T pose, <laughs> please. But if you really want to, I will not stop you. Okay, so let's get into Photoshop. I hope you guys have my file. Is it working for you guys, the file? Can you open it? Yes. Yes? Okay, cool. So um, I'm just going to get my layers. Where's my layers? Okay, so in the Photoshop, you're going to see um, these three characters that I posed already and I pre-drawn, so you don't have to go through the that that part and you can just worry about design uh, less less about anatomy or anything like that so you have this uh, layer that i named baseline art i believe and you can turn it on or off and then you have the other part where it's um the silhouette right so um before we start actually i have something else to show you if you want to make your own pose there are a few ways to do it you can draw it with your raw power you know, your raw talent and <laughs> memory and anything. It might take a bit of time, but if you don't have that raw power to do it, I recommend you guys to get into some posing software. I use Daz Studio. Um, I don't know if you guys use it. Let me just open it really quick. It's free, by the way, costs nothing. So why not, right? So it's this software. Um, going to move it here really quick okay so it's this software called das studio i don't know if it's still 4.4.1 or 4.25 um i might have an old version of it but here you can pose a character in here and they have like a lot of joints like if you click on the leg here you can like do stuff um and 
and you can change the angle. You can export it to Blender and do a lighting pass or anything like that. And it didn't take me that long to learn. You just have to go on the left side and then you take, uh, like it, it comes with a, with like a, it comes with a figure already. And then they, they also come with some poses as well. So, um, so for example, I can drop another girl here. Okay, my computer died. <laughs> Wait. Um, okay, sorry. I can't drop it because my computer is like burning. But you you can uh, really like change poses of characters here. You can do a lot of things. You can make it like more uh, more bodybuilder if that's what you're into. Uh, I don't know. Like maybe um, there's sliders for for a lot of stuff. So. Um, I just use this sometimes to do some posing and and then I can paint over it and then it's like less time consuming. I think if you can, you can also take photo of yourself or family members doing a pose that you know you'd like and then use the photo as a reference or search online for photos. you know that would take a bit of time too, but um, it's a useful little tool for you if you're struggling with anatomy. And you you wanna you still wanna do this, okay? So today we start with this, and the first step is silhouette. So when I'm doing silhouette, I like to make this layer of of the character to like the liner to be like really really um, like light, so it doesn't interfere too much with me. And I make another layer on the bottom to add something to the silhouette. Let's say so. Um, I don't use fancy brushes. I have default Photoshop, hard round pressure. <laughs> um, and then, you know, I have gathered some references here on the left side. And let's say I'll start with a girl on the right. So I'm going to be really broad with my character. So I want to do an ice mage that's maybe inspired a bit by Mongolian clothing. I'm not going to make a Mongolian ice mage. I'm just going to inspire myself from it. So I got some pictures here and I'm looking at it. I'm like, okay, I think there are some elements from each picture that I like. I like the color of this, uh, this lady here. I like the coat of this girl. Um, I like the, you know, maybe just a fur that's going on here. And I like some, this is jacket from her. Okay, and I, I'm really enjoying this cool uh, fur thingy on the hat too. And they've got some cool shoes. Wow, love it. And, um, but I'm not digging this hat too much. And I want to do maybe more like a, a hoodie kind of thing. So, and, and then this is an artwork I found on the internet from Wesley Burt, um, some design he did. And I really like the color scheme, the just overall feeling. So with these reference in hand, I start painting a silhouette exploration. So another thing I do is I like to take the face of the character and then make it a bit like less, like a bit more, sorry, more dark. So I go here and then I can start. So for this character, you know, let's start by giving her a hoodie. Okay, so, you know, I just like, I can even turn this line, line art more, more, like gone. Okay, let's say I, I, I want it gone. Maybe it's better like that. And guys, when you're drawing, please use a small window like this on the side so you can see overall what's going on with your, where you're painting. Um, I always ask my students to do that. So you go here, window, arrange, new window. And then you can get a smaller window that updates in real time while you paint. And I really recommend you to use two monitors if you have the, um, the ability to get two monitors. So I'm putting my thing on the other side. OK, so but with a hoodie, um, with a cool little coat that you know that it's maybe cold in the winter so she gonna have a bit more gears and i like the thing that was sticking out 
on the reference photo, but I don't want it to be like 100% I like the photo. So I want maybe like her hat has a a little like fluffy thing in, in the back. And it's it's cute like that, you know? Then I want to make sure there's some thickness to my hoodie. And I give her a long robe, just like in some of those reference photos. So how long for the robe? Maybe this long. So it's a, uh, so really quickly, you can have something like already suggested in, in this way. So I have like a bit of fur, let's say, on the on, on the bottom of the robe, just just like uh, like in the uh, in in the pictures, and then I feel like this thing could be a bit more exaggerated here. So you have some more fur here, and then maybe a thicker coat, and of course she's going to have more sleeves here. Let's give her more sleeves, and. And I'm, I'm, you know, I don't, I don't hate this. I don't really hate this. And then um, I can give her some shoes because, you know, it's cold in the winter. You can't, you can't walk without shoes and ice or you will freeze your toes off. And that's not good. So you add some shoes with some fur, let's say. And... Uh, now, if you look at a silhouette, like, okay, she's got shoes and you turn off this line art, you're like, oh, wow, she has clothes. But I feel like an ice mage, you know, maybe she's like a hero of, of the game and she could use a staff, like a magic staff. Really cheesy, but why not? You know, I'll give her a cool magic, magic staff. Uh, that's made of like some kind of wood, I guess, and um, it's got like some ice on top of it. It gives her her magic, some icicle stuff, and it's tied with some um, ropes, I guess. Some ropes, yeah. Some ropes. That's um. And then the rope fall slightly on here. So then maybe she has a coat as well over her body. We can't really see it here, but we can try to suggest that she has like some kind of coat that goes over her. Just just like the you know the coat we saw earlier, like just a little thing. So then we have one for the first one, and let's say for the second one. Let's make the one in the middle. So the one in the middle, I had the idea of having something a bit more um, anime, <laughs> a bit more fantasy, stuff like that. You know, I saw uh, I saw this picture. I was like, wow, it's so abstract. And maybe we can have something, you know, more fantasy. I don't know, like maybe she's floating and she's got her powers and. So this one, I'm less looking at reference. I'm more like pulling from my own imagination. So let's go with that. Same thing here. Um, for this one, I want her to have like really flowy, flowy hair. And she's like this ice mage that's like a bit almost like, like a, like a fairy, not, not exactly, but like, a, you know, they, they float, but without the wing. Um, you know, really pretty, pretty hair, and then uh, maybe more hair, yeah, more hair. So, and then she has like uh, some kind of a braid, so, so it's kind of like Elsa, like a tribute to Elsa from Frozen, just a little braid in the back instead of on the side, that could be really fun. And then, you know, maybe she's wearing a shirt, but it's, uh, I mean, a dress, but it's really, really like old and torn because she's like this, you know, those little young fairies, but they, um, they, they are super old. They just look really young. It could be those kind of stuff. So 
you just um, draw you draw like some some clothes and then give her a little skirt and the skirt is also more or less torn and it's like kind of floating as well and maybe I thought maybe her limbs could be made of ice and you know she's like an ice ice creature ice fairy ice guardian and the hand is also made of ice but this part we can't really see yet right but you know I have it planned out for myself and she's got some ice shards in her hand and she can spawn these and attack the enemies with some ice shards and she has a what does she have she has a rose made of ice that she she used to draw her power from so you might be like wow are you just straying too much from your story um i hate to say it yes i'm like doing this as i go um normally you would need to follow your brief that is either very limiting or very free um, depending on what kind of brief you got and um, I think it's also good to be more abstract and let go when you're designing for yourself so for me when I design for myself I just like draw as I draw as I go I have a general idea of what I want but I'm not going to limit myself by like saying okay this one has to be in the Mongolian era and 300 years ago or something like that i'm just like i'm gonna draw something it's an ice mage uh what kind of ice mage i'll, I'll do it as i go so it, you you can follow your guideline and you should but it's also important to have an abstract thinking when you're designing just let your shape guide you like you you might find something in your shape when you're just drawing relaxed so there is a really funny exercise i did in school um, back then it was my teacher told us to close our eyes and take a pen or marker and then you just just like take your pen and then on the paper you just close your eyes and then you draw you draw something so i just drew something and then you draw 30 of these or sorry not 30 but let's say you draw 12 of these i don't know i, I closed my eyes and i drew i drew some stuff um and then you know Look at these shapes and then based on these shapes, try to try to make like um, a character out of it or something like this one. Maybe it's it's like a super fairy with wings that's or some kind of angel who has like a really big uh, lower body. But, you know, or, or like some kind of thing and then they they're they're like, a, you know. I don't know, some little angel. You can make anything out of anything. And it's a good abstract exercise to do. Give that a try if you if you don't have Photoshop <laughs> that you can follow. Um, and the last one, I was thinking about something a bit more medieval, like these uh, these these ladies with the headscarf. I thought it was kind of cool, like a mage, an ice queen of some some sort um and like uh these cool robes something like that maybe a bit more scary like this uh this knight here um so i have these and i'm going to try to do something like that okay so with this one i'm gonna give her that long sleeve thing that those those ladies they have so it's not supposed to be medieval it's just inspired by it so i'm not going to be inaccurate or anything so you just and maybe i'm gonna give her some spikes on her shoulder just a bit like those narnia narnia ladies from like the ice queen thingy um Let's see. And I'm going to give her that uh, veil that they have. So, 
got that and maybe like an ice crown of some sort really cheesy but whatever it's uh it's just uh you know you should never tell yourself no like oh that's bad or oh, this is that i i think the thing you should really be telling yourself when you're designing is why not you know just do it and then decide later like why not don't refuse your ideas so put a bit of that and you give them you can give her like a long long robe that goes falls on the ground and that um goes across like in the front here and some in the back so maybe she's got some fur also in here i don't know but like i, I think it would be cool if it's open in the front kind of like this instead of fully closed I think uh you know it's trendy or something interesting okay we need some silhouette here for the feet so kind of like this let's see okay so we have like a rough um rough silhouettes for all these uh, three poses that we started and uh i hope you guys made uh, at least one hopefully so what happens is usually you should pick one of these like maybe this girl maybe this girl whichever one you like that's closer to your um, original idea and then variate on that so they're very different this one is kind of mongolian this one's a bit more like a cute uh, fantasy thing and then this one is um medieval maybe so um i uh, let's say i'm going to pick this one so what you can do is um, you can you can change her by so I'm gonna make an extra layer here and I just copy this layer I'm gonna put it on the side so this is my first silhouette and then I have this one in the middle and um, I have this copy and I'm like I don't like her hair anymore I think I have you know I have uh, more ideas like maybe Maybe I like her with the veil. I don't know. Like maybe you like the veil from the first one and you want to put it on her. Like, uh, you know, you could you could do that, right? With with the super uh, crown thingy. And then maybe you're like, I don't like her dress. It's too short, and I want something a bit, you know, more longer. So it's basically kind of like the first one, but with a longer dress. So you could you could do that. You know. And um, and then you go and you go like okay I'm I'm cool with that I'm going to make one more. So with this method you can quickly change your idea from one to um, another thing really quickly. And this one, oh, okay, sorry. So then maybe you want something really. Um, revealing maybe she's not wearing a lot of clothes and she's got like some short hair like she's a really modern type of thing so something like that and then she's she's got like maybe a puffy sleeves i don't know puffy sleeves but tight pants right and uh, oh, it kind of looks like a bit like uh, the guy from uh, Hal's Moving Castle. Well, a bit like Hal without his coat or something. And then uh, you give her like really long boots, you know, like maybe it's a female Hal. I don't know. So and pointy shoes, perhaps. And then bam, you have three options. So I like to. Um, I like to do more options until I find a one that really fits my taste. So um, let's say I still like my idea in the beginning. You might be surprised. A lot of times people and like do a lot of variation and then they still like the first, first um, test that they did. So um, let's say I'm gonna close all of that. 
And I'm going to bring back the first one here. Uh, just get rid of those variations I did. So don't get rid of yours. <laughs> Please save it. <laughs> um, and then um, and then now you can start making your line art. Usually I, I have the silhouette and I like it, then I kind of um, start making the line art by having, you know, the base silhouette under, sorry, not the, well, the silhouette and the line art, the base line art underneath with the face on a darker surface. So I have a, something like this to start. And then I would draw my line art that is a bit more precise of like what I want to do. So again, I'm really primitive. I'm using heart round pressure, opacity, default Photoshop stuff. And, and then, you know, you just, you just start drawing, like, let's say, oh, also I like to turn the silhouette to be um, really light. So instead of like dark, I want something like almost, almost like super, super light. So I can kind of see what I'm drawing. Okay. So, you know, I give her like uh, her hair and maybe it's like one of those hairstyles like in uh, Claymore. I don't know if you guys saw that show. It's really good. So you have like a bit of a spiky hair. So, you know, just, just really loosely block out the, the stuff that's really like uh, important for you. So I have the ears. Maybe we give her like a pointy elf ear. I don't know. Could be fun. And uh, like you just, uh, the face. And she's got, maybe she just has like a crystal here on her chest that gives her her power. And then she just got this like new, well, not new dress, but a dress that's super uh, torn. It's a bit broken. And so you got like here, here, here. You know, her dress maybe it's broken here. And then you just go really quick, really quickly. Don't get lost in the details too much, I would say. Um, keep it like really loose if you want. So so uh, the hand, I already drew it, so you, you shouldn't have to like, the hand is like something that bothers me a lot. Like it's hard to get the hand right. So you can take photos of your own hand or use, um, use a 3D thing. So broken cloth, stuff like that. Let's do the dress. Maybe she has another crystal right here. And some more here. And let's see for the dress. So something really simple, I guess it will, it will work. So we want to make sure everything, so it's good to have the anatomy underneath and then you can like make sure that you're drawing in the good or at least close to the good perspective if you can. Like uh, always keep your base on. Um, so some broken cloth for here. Um, this one maybe like this. And then for the leg, we're going to have. So for her leg, I am planning to have them be made of ice and her limbs. I think that could be fun. So you just suggest a little bit like, oh, it's crystal. It's not just normal uh, feet. Oh, another thing is if you're drawing feet in characters, don't draw every single toe. It looks a bit odd sometimes. 
like you, you can keep the details on the bottom to be um, rather um, um, blurry so then you can um, so then people can focus up here instead of here right so don't draw every single toe if you're drawing like some barefoot character like uh, like what I have here just a little suggestion of feet is is good enough unless you know the the center of the picture is the feet like it's it's the main focus i know some some people are like doing that um that you can draw the toes like really nice but um if it's not the focus don't don't do it so you have like the hand here um, and occasionally you want to turn off your oops I'm gonna turn off your silhouette and check. Okay, how's my line art? Okay, still really rough. But you know, just wanna see what's going on. Okay, hand could be really rough too. So stuff like that, and then the flower, you just do. So as long as you can understand what you drew, it's good. Um, maybe it's really rough and no one else understands. But if you, you do, it's okay. It's just later on, you want to make sure to draw it so that other people can also uh, understand. But for now, it's it's good enough if it's super rough. Um, okay, how's, uh, how's everyone doing? Were you guys able to open it and do some silhouettes? Anyone? <laughs> yes. Yes, okay, cool. <laughs> That was like a solid yes. Like I have the best silhouette kind of yes. <laughs> oh, nice. Okay. So, you know, do the braids, everything. And then on this stage, you can still um, do variations if you wanted because uh, line art doesn't mean that this is the design. So you can copy this and then be like, um, I want her to have something on her head. I don't know, some crystals on her hair here, or I want her to have a, a super, uh, like, like it's open here on her dress and you see her belly button. And then she has some kind of um, belt going on here maybe. If you want it. Someone in the chat said they couldn't open the file. Oh, really? Might uh, okay, let me check. Sorry, I cannot see the chat while I'm drawing. I'm like super distracted. I, I'm just trying to see the chat now. Oh, don't worry. It's just that I tried to click on it and copy the link as well. And I don't know, it doesn't work. I don't know what's going on actually. Oh, um, you cannot download it basically? Yeah. Huh, that's that's weird. Let uh, me see if I can I can maybe try to like re reshare it or share it individually or something. Yeah, okay. please do. Thank <laughs> Thanks. you. Okay, so uh, I hope it works out. But continuing, like uh, maybe that opening there is not so great. Uh, maybe you want her to have like a super, um, you know, multi-layer dress. And then you, you can really like, do that here in in the line art phase still. So, um, like you can design away. So now she's got like a super cake layered dress with a lot of stuff on her hair that I find is maybe a bit too um, too much. For All right. Me. So um, I uploaded in the chat. So just let me know uh, anyone if if this if it works. All right. Hope it works. <laughs> um, yeah, um, and then let's say I don't like this. I still like my original design better. Um, it happens a lot. So at this point, you want to start like let's say refining a bit. Let's say you're happy with this this design. Uh, I'm not here to teach you guys to make the most original design ever. I just want to show you guys uh, what's a good process you can kind of follow so that. Um, so that it, it, you, you can create many. And hopefully when you create many characters, you are able to have some of them that are going to look really good. So, 
anyway. So I want to refine my line art a bit more. And so I like to use this uh, technique a bit where I put some shading of like uh, the suggestion of the shadows or the areas that are uh, more like in in the shadow, yeah. So a little bit. So I I kind of imagine, let's say, the light source comes from from the right side, and uh, let's say let's say I think her face could could really use a darker darker line art. Yeah. Hold it, and then we continue with that. It's more of a comic book approach to how like this. Um, this kind of a darker, darker, um, darker parts. So um, it helps me suggest a bit of the volume in in terms of line art. Like you know, line art is like lines. It's it's flat. It's one dimensional. But you want to try to get as much information as you can, if possible. So. We want to like have a bit of this um, this volume suggestion if we can. So kind of some more here. I think this part is showing too much of the of that part. So I'm gonna get rid of it a bit. Maybe, yeah. Maybe, maybe. And then maybe I give her some little spikes on her arm because it's like a rose or something. So we do some. And you can also suggest a shadow here of the dress. So you feel like, OK, it's at a distance. And then here, maybe a bigger shadow. And uh, okay, so oh, and the braids. And I suggest like you guys try to draw a lot of these for your character. Let's say you do a few designs, and then just stop and go do other things, take a break or something like that, and then don't look at it for <laughs> for a few days. And then you're going to come back with a much um, more fresh mind than, uh, than, than like, you know, if you keep at it for like many, many hours and uh, you're like not seeing it anymore. You know, when you stare at something for too long, you just don't see it um, afterwards. So um, let's say I have this and then I'm like cool with it. Um, and I did many explorations and this is still my favorite. So you should get to some stage like this and then um, I think your line art should look more or less like this. So I also did the other ones. Um, because I was like, why not? <laughs> why not? I did the, I spent time to draw these silhouettes. So why not draw the other ones? Um, and maybe I'll pick later. So I've got my Mongolian, uh, not Mongolian, Mongolian inspired lady here. I've got my um, anime girl. And then this one, I was like, what if we merged ice with robots? Like a, like a robot who learned how to do magic. You know, you put magic and mechs together. Could be fun. I mean, maybe not everyone agrees with me, but I tried. So just try your ideas, even if it's weird. Like, even if it looks maybe not so great, uh, you know, you try it and you know, okay, it doesn't look so great. Okay. So let's say that you did all of your line art um, and you suggested volume, you suggested folds, the design is generally there, just just like this, 
or even you know better line art than this. Um, then we're going to put on some colors. So um, I'm just going to talk a little bit about colors and go back to PowerPoint. Okay. And then we're going to come back to Photoshop after. So you're going to choose one of your line art uh, that you explored and you're like, okay, this is the one. But don't be afraid. Even, yeah. you, even if you chose the line art that you like, it doesn't mean you have to stick to it. You can still change it later on. It's just right now, this looks like your best idea, right? So you're going with that. You can't just keep exploring and never finish, right? So you choose something. And now for coloring, you know, your reference is going to come in handy again. Well, actually your reference will be with you this whole time. So you need to pick color for your character. And picking a color is not just picking a color like take this, put it at, take this, put it there. There are um, theories for colors, just like, um, you know, what we talked about earlier. So looking at your reference, you want to pick the color that fits your character, like logically, right? So if I'm designing an ice mage and I'm using the super uh, red from this uh, soldier and, you know, is it going to look like an ice mage or a fire mage? I'm not so sure. So maybe you want to go with more icy colors if possible. I'm not saying you can't pull off the red on Ice Mage. Mm -hmm. It could work, but you know, you, you have to uh, be careful. So a bit of color theory, like on my characters, I think it's better not to have too many colors. Um, I don't know if you guys uh, ever heard of this, like when you're dressing yourself, like, you know, you're going out with your friends or you're going on a date and you want to look cool or nice right so it's better not to have more than three um colors like other than black and white let's say not more than three colors on you um from your head to your toe so it's just a general theory it it's not mm -hmm. always true um but there is a theory called like the ga gamut if i'm saying it correct is on the color wheel you can draw these geometric shapes um, on the wheel and move it around and then you can basically use the colors that are within these ge geometric shapes. So this would imply that you'll have three major color here, like uh, the one I'm pointing at, which is like um, this uh, dark purple, this uh, kind of blue si uh, um, emerald, if I call that the right word, but this, this color here, or you have some kind of more yellowish green. And then everything else is going to be a mixture of this color. So this works really well for environment painting, but also works well for you to choose colors and to have a limited palette instead of a vomit of colors that you can, you know, like it could be too much. Um, not always true, just a suggestion. So for me, I am, I just Googled ice colors and you can get some cool palettes on the internet by just Googling. So I got this all cool colors. So I might go with that, maybe, I don't know. I'm gonna see, you know, like it's up to up to us. Um, so let's say, you know, you're trying to pick a palette of color. I really also uh, suggest you guys to read into color psychology. So it's basically, uh, what it is is just like each color have have some kind of association in terms of like meaning and uh, these are just common um, ideas or emotions or things that are associated with these colors. It's not always true, depending on what culture you're from, right? So like for Chinese people, red is like a wedding color, you know, like Chinese weddings, they use all red and then white is a funeral color. Um, and if you use like all white, it's like you're going to someone's, uh, you know, someone died. But in Western culture, white is a purity color and it, it it's like marriage, stuff like that. So really think about your audience. Are you making game for Asia or are you making games for people that associate white color with this meaning? Um, then I, I'm not going to go over them. I'll just say that please read into it if you are struggling to pick colors. I think um, this will really help you with like trying to convey the meaning you're, you're doing. Um, another thing about colors is to have this idea in mind. So 
I don't know the word in English exactly because I learned this like in another language, but um, I'm going to call it main secondary and accent color. So again, Mr. McCree to the rescue. I'm using him as a, an example. I, I hope you guys are not tired of seeing him. Um, so here from McCree, the main color, he has a main color here and it's more like this brownish color for him. Main color is basically the color that occupies like a lot of the surface um, of your character. And then his secondary color, I would say is really this red cape. So this is debatable, right? Secondary color is the color that, you know, again, we go back to the golden ratio, the 60, um, 60%, 40, uh, 30%, 10% um, idea. So the golden ratio isn't everything, guys. Please look into it. This sounds like a voodoo, but so it's following that rule. And his accent color, what do you guys think is his accent color? It's really easy. Anybody want to give it a try? You guys are pretty shy. <laughs> Okay. Um, that, um, that, oh, like, we have some guesses yeah, in the chat. Blue. Oh, go ahead. It's like um, bluish. I don't. I don't know how to spell that. It's a this thing color, like aquamarine, maybe. Or we've it, got we've got some answers in the chat. Uh, people said green and cyan. So I think okay. everyone's talking about the same color. <laughs> cool. So you guys are so smart. You got it. Wow. Okay, that was not supposed to be sarcastic, but I'm really glad you guys got it. Um, basically, yeah, these blue colors that are extremely saturated and blue is the accent color. So when you're designing character, the thing that you shouldn't do is to have a bunch of secondary color or a bunch of accent color. So when everything is like 20%, 20%, 20% everywhere, like equal, it will look like a vomit from far. Um, but you want to have these like proportions of like colors. It's like proportions, like, you know, 60%, the golden ratio, whatever it is, or 80% is something and then you have some accent color. So keep it, have like this layering, this rhythm, this hierarchy is what I'm trying to say. Um, and that will really help you make a character that's not too busy or too plain to look at. So um, if you, uh, when you're endowed, go look at McCree. <laughs> Um, I, I'm sure there's more character than him that has this uh, going on, but he's an example. Okay, and finally, I learned this at my work that I don't know if I agree with it, but um, I'll still let you guys know. Maybe you do. So um, it's called like a Lego test. What happens is um, if you want to check how readable is your character or recognizable is to draw your character in a Lego man. Um, like these ones, right? Like, and then if you can still recognize your character as a little Lego, then it works. But if you can't recognize it anymore, um, then you got some more work to do. So we can see here, you got like Captain uh, Jack Sparrow, you got like the Flash, you got like, oh, some of these people, I don't even know. I think this one is, is this Wolverine? I'm not sure. <laughs> um, so yeah, so you can do this Lego test um, if you want. Okay, let's go back to our Photoshop. So let's say we did, we did these uh, line art and we are like uh, happy. Oops, sorry. I'm going to just close these ones. And then uh, we have uh, the silhouettes. I think it was here. So we have the silhouettes for them underneath and you know, you don't want to throw that out. You're going to use the silhouette as a layer mask to do your coloring. So I've got like uh, my, my girl here in the middle that let's say is my favorite. I make a new layer and then I lock it to the silhouettes. So right here and I can start putting some colors. So earlier I had a color palette that I like that I'm going to kind of use it was that cyan bluish thing. So um, without any delay, we can start putting some colors. 
So let's say I'm going to give a skin color as a base. Whoops, and then it's applied to everybody. I don't want it to go on everybody. So I'm just going to get rid of it here. Okay, so I got a skin color. I like to do things in layers because I'm like super paranoid and I like to have everything on a layer, but you don't have to be like me, you know. So right now the colors could be really weird. It doesn't matter. You just want to like put everything um, in the mask. It's, it's like you're creating a layer mask. So you, you put like the hair color. So it's like a really ugly, like not the best yellow right now, but you know, we just, this is like the best part. I love this. It's like doing a color book, coloring book. And then you just, you don't really think about anything. You just like fill it in. And it's like uh, my, if I, when I retire, I'm going to like do this instead of Sudoku, I think. So you got this and then we can do her dress. Um, I'm thinking of a white dress. Um, okay. That looks more like yellow. So since the background is pretty white, I'm going to go with like some color that I can actually see for the dress. So just like a gray. So everything is on a layer. It will be very easy to edit later on. Just fill it in, fill it in. My character is pretty simple, so we can do this fast. But if you have something super complex, um, this is going to take a while. And you might want to do it on one layer instead of like multiple layers like me. Like if your computer is strong, then yeah. Um, and then we're going to make some ice for her body. So the parts that's going to be ice, I'm going to go with a um, random blue color for now. So I want her hand to be made of ice. Oh, I missed a bit here. Oops. So her hand is made of ice. This is made of ice. And then uh, this part is made of ice. Her leg here, lower leg is made of ice. And then we got a patch of ice here just to suggest it. So more ice here. And I want her neck to be also partially be made of ice. So that is kind of fun, right? You know, everything's made of ice. So you got it this thing going on and I think I want some more eyes here and we can make her have like glowy eyes I think um, so another layer for the glowy eyes the like uh, this and then I want to give her some some makeup like you know blue lipstick you can't really do, I mean, uh, nobody really does that in real life, but uh, hey, since we're in the fantasy thing right now, might as well like, give her like a, you know, reminds you of a icy kiss or something. Okay, so we have laid down most of the colors and I'm not exactly happy with the colors, so I'm going to start adjusting since everything is on a layer. You can easily go to a layer by right clicking it and then hitting like left clicking on the layer that it was on. So you don't have to like keep going here trying to find where it is, right? So I make this white and I think it would be cool if she has a gradient on her, on her dress. Um, I don't really care what color is the gradient, but um, let's see like a blue, just like the, the color underneath. And I don't like this blue on the leg right now, I think it's it's not exactly the blue that I want. So I'm going to shift the color. So to shift the color, you can hit the um, uh, control U to quickly go to hue saturation. And then you, you move the slider and then everything will just, um, will, will change. Um, I'm still not happy with the blue. So I'm going to add a little bit more to it by using the color here in her eyes. Ooh. So I want to make it glow a little bit. 
and it's more cool like that, you know. So some glow here and a little glow to her um, to her chest, like with the with the ice thingy. And I still find this color to be too blue. I like it a little bit more green, right? You know, you guys remember I had this reference um, of like the snow plane. I can't find it, but it's basically like this thing here. When you go really, really high up on an ice mountain, the ice is this color literally in real life. I don't know why. You guys got to see it for yourself. It's really, really cool. So I'm inspiring myself from, you know, color in the nature um, for, for my drawing. And it's, it's fun like that, right? So this part, I'm going to shift it slightly to match with the dress and her hair is a bit too yellow like nobody is kind of like a blonde person I'm thinking of making a blonde person but it's um it's probably not this color so I'm going to shift around and maybe maybe something more like still yellow but it could be white, you know, like it could be white or anything, but we'll, we'll see. So far, I'm liking this one a bit more. Um, and maybe the dress could still be whiter. So um, you get this going on. So this is option one, right? Option one for your thing. And right now, it's still a good opportunity for you to change your design if you want. Like, let's say I like the eye spikes on this lady here, then I can uh, make a new layer and like put these, um, put these, these spikes on her. Like maybe, maybe she is the ice queen, not the girl on the left side. I don't know. It could be that. And then you give it like a nice glow at the top and you give it, sorry. The glow should be on the bottom. So nice glow, nice glow. And then you have something a bit different. So let's say we save this as our um, first option. Now we put it on the side. So when you get to color, you can do color variations, right? So maybe, I don't know, you don't want her dress to be white. You want her dress to be blue. You know, it, it could work. Um, let me just make an extra copy of it. I don't want to like lose all my progress. So blue dress. So we can do a blue dress with um, a gradient on the bottom that's white, right? We can change her hair color now to, you know, maybe, maybe like this, right? So, and then obviously the ice color here doesn't work anymore. Uh, we got to change it to, maybe the ice color is, is a bit more wider, more pastel. So it's like, it doesn't fight too much with it. Like ice does isn't always blue. Ah, uh, we lost our lipstick. Oh no. I'll bring it back. Which layer is the lipstick? Um, okay, it's this one. So we still got the lipstick and then we changed this thing here a bit to like uh, something really bright. And then, you know, you can even change the skin to like maybe she's super ghost, like ghosty, pasty. So um, really quickly you get like, like a nice color variation um, already. And then for the dress, like maybe, maybe you want to do like a pattern or some kind of decoration for it, you can. So stuff like that, I 
don't know, maybe some uh, some dots. So we say like, oh, it's snow, snow pattern. It goes all the way up. Or maybe the sleeves are white. On the bottom of the dress, it's kind of more like a white, reminds you of snow. So then bam, you have two options now. And uh, let me demonstrate another option. So if we, if we disobey the rule and we go for something like red, the fiery color, So you will see that it doesn't work that well anymore. Maybe we give her like a black hair. She has a red, red eyes, I don't know. So now it's starting to look a bit more demonic. <laughs> so color schemes are super important. Um, when you're doing these these things, so I can literally turn her into a a fiery demon or some kind of vampire really really fast by just tweaking the colors. So something like that, and then I, I might change her skin color to uh, I don't know. No, you just you just test it out. You can test it. Yep, something like that. So now without the snow pattern, um, where's the pattern? Oh, I can't find my patterns. Hold up, guys. So it's not you. It's you. Okay. And then this color, instead of white, we can go with um, something a bit more corrupt, I guess. I mean, it could be yellow, so it's fire, but I, I, I like this purple thingy. And her limbs, instead of white, we can go with something darker. So, you know, it's it's more, um, more like hell. <laughs> I mean, I don't hate this green either. So it's really subjective, I think. Yeah, whatever color you guys want. Oops, okay. So this is how I do my color variation. I put everything on a layer and then I just, um, I just try to um, go for try different composition of the layer. Oops, uh, this one got changed. Oh well, you know it wasn't that color. This there. So then you know I do a few of these and I'm like you know what I still like the first one, um, and I'm gonna keep going with the first one. So. This is basically the end of the design. You don't need to go any further. This is good enough to design a character. You don't need like fancy renders or lighting or shadows to call it a character design. Like most of the time when I'm working, the design is finished at this stage now because as long as we can understand the material and what is going on, you don't need fancy render at all. So when you choose this character here um whoops wow i can't draw <laughs> when you choose this character here the character design process is finished um so let me show you guys something i'm just gonna turn off everything okay so what I did was I did some design for these characters as well. 
Um, for my robot too, I try to stick to that blue color that I had um, because I feel like blue really makes us think about ice along with white color. But it doesn't mean that you can't use any red. For example, this girl here, who is the Mongolian inspired uh, heroine uh, with the ice staff, she has some red, some brown earthy colors on her, but we, it still works because um, it's not like a super warm red. And it makes sense that, you know, these people, they, they have these more like um, clothing that's more like, uh, I don't know how to call it more, eth eth not ethnic, but more um, in my fantasy culture thing, they have this kind of clothes so it can work and it's combined uh, well with the, the blue. So you don't have to avoid red at all costs, even though you're designing an ice character. It really depends on the context. And then this one, I was like, you know, it's not looking that great. And it's I'm glad that I did three of them so I can actually choose one to continue. And even after coloring, you know, you take a bit of rest and then you come back and you look at it again um, you might want to do modifications, small modifications, like just a headpiece, uh, you know, like I, I give her um, more like a headpiece thingy and the veil is more like covering better. And then it does that opening thing that that is resonated with her dress on the bottom. So um, I try to fix it up, but I'm still not convinced of this one, let's say, but I tried. So guys, what's important is that you, you try those possibilities that you have um, in your head. Okay, so does anyone have any questions so far before I move on to the final part? <laughs> or you need time to think about it? Okay. Um, maybe if people want, they can uh, share, share what they did, uh, share the images in the chat. Oh, you can put images in chats now? I don't know. Yeah, there should be, if you click on the file button, it should be possible to add uh, add an image from there. Okay. Well, guys, please share if you're feeling like it. Don't be shy. I don't judge. I'm sure you guys are, you know, got your very unique ideas. So um, I will check your stuff in a bit. And if you have questions, uh, don't hesitate to um, ask. If not, I'm going to show you the next step. So, you know, after you're done with the design, um, you know, like if you want to sell it better or you want to show it to other people or something like that, and you want to present it, I like to do like a more rendered version of it. So um, let me just find my file. So let's say I was really happy with my ice, uh, ice girl from here. That, um, you know, this one, and I wanted to push it more. Um, what I do is I take this sketch and I would do a grayscale of it um, in Photoshop. So you just paint on top of it without um, any color in mind, but it's really easy because you already know the color, you already know the material. So the rest is just really like simple stuff. Like you, you, you put it here and then you can turn it into a grayscale and you already have the values that you need. So I know that the hair is light. I know that she's got a white dress, which is a lighter value and her icy legs is kind of darker. Um, so I just do that. And then you try to get the material with the icy stuff. And really fun thing with Blender, guys, is you can play with materials. So I did a test in Blender where I took my, you know, model, my 3D model, and I just made it like a glass. So this is my 3D render I have. And you can have like, sorry guys, if this is nudity or something, I don't think there's nipples, so it's okay. Um, so you can do lighting tests in 3D afterwards to make your drawing more pretty. Um, and then uh, take screenshots and you can do material tests. So I have like a, 
ice material test and I have a glass material test. There's plenty of free tutorials online to do that. And you don't need any modeling skill. You just do um, like some um, 3D nodes and, and then you don't have to try to think, okay, how does ice work? You know, you just, you can just draw it. But if you really want, you can get a really good reference photos or something or artworks that you like and try to understand how ice work. So there's two ways to go at it. So um, basically I go for this, but I still alter the design a bit. Like I, I thought that my rose was kind of like uh, not that great. Um, where's my layer? Sorry. I thought my rose was a bit abstract and then I wanted to fix it up a bit. Um, I, I added like a little band on the dress so it's like less less simple um, so I just like uh, do a little tweaks and I add some spikes on the legs then um, very easily after you just have to make a new layer and you can start coloring you put it in color mode right here by making a new layer and then you can you can even use this one maybe let me see for quick visualization, I'm gonna put my, this is my uh, my sketch, as you remember earlier, that has some color on it. And I put it to color mode onto my grayscale. And then you can already have a really quick visualization of how it kind of looks in color. So, um, I'd say like keep your sketch and don't throw it. Um, don't paint on the same layer and then try to like get it, uh, get a quick look. And then you can still tweak the colors by adjusting this layer. So you can like, you know, um, go in uh, control U and hue saturation. And so oh, uh, uh, by the way, someone posted their, uh, someone posted what they did in the chat. Oh, Looks okay. really good. Let's see. Everybody's going to see it. <laughs> Where is the chat? I can't open the chat. Oh my God. Um, oh, there. So I have to click to download to see it? Um, yes. Oh, okay. Let's see. Maybe I can post it and then share it with everyone. Oh. Look at this. That is great. It's a Japanese kind of inspired outfit or like a more Asian inspired outfit. It makes me think of the Japanese uh, yokai called a, a Yuki, Yuki Onna, I think. It's a snow, snow, uh, snow monster lady kind of thing, but really cool colors. So guys, it's sketch, very sketch, but as long as it conveys the idea, this is like, um, you know, like a really quick way to do it. So good job for whoever did this. I don't know who did it. Actually, I can see. Oh, Cassandra. Nice job, Cassandra. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. All right. So if anyone else wants to post, feel free. And finally, um, I guess we're getting near the end. So I'll show you guys uh, what I did with it. So um, basically, so this is what I had in the end, guys. It's very different than my <laughs> my first sketch, as you can see. So um, at first, I started with like the lady with the skin color and the blonde hair and like uh, ice um, stuff that's more emerald color or aqua aquamarine. I must be saying the names wrong. Um, and without like the ice stuff. And then I thought that maybe in order to make it look um, less human, more ice, I would give her like a avatar skin. <laughs> I made her, made her like James Cameron avatar. <laughs> so, um, and instead of like blue makeup, I'm gonna go for some purple makeup. And here, I put red on the character. It's an ice character, but I put red. So um, it can work because uh, it's like a very blue red. So you don't feel like it's a fiery red. Um, and I guess I canceled the idea of having like this glowing thing near the uh, limbs. It's more of a ice kind of feeling. And you know, you add some, you can add some snow in the back. 
So this is actually not snow. I found a picture of a galaxy online and I turn it into um, on a, on a lending mode, lighten, and just put it there and it looks like snow. So um, that's how I make a character from uh, zero to 100, I guess. So yeah. All right. And let me see. Awesome. That was great. Oh, thank you. <laughs> I just want to put my PowerPoint. And you can create more designs if you want to with the PSD I gave you. I don't really care if you use the same pose and you use that thing as a base. Um, you're welcome to do whatever with those uh, poses and stuff. I made them with my 3D model. So um, go ahead, do it for do it for work, do it for yourself, do it for whatever. I don't mind. And that's it. Yeah, so, so thank you everyone for coming to the workshop and thank you, Ying, for teaching it. Yeah. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, thank you guys. Thank you All so right. much.